our American colleague was planning to speak about the history of the um, uh, of this uh, particular uh, aspect of the visceration of um, as a serration. No, the, well, cervical cancer is a very serious problem. We um, spoke about that. There were lectures. We had discussions. We know that, unfortunately, the level of incidence is quite high and mortality rate is quite high. Unfortunately, there is a lot of problems. And uh, after the stage of vigor, oh, one, uh, one, B2, um, uh, 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 chemo, uh, radiotherapy might become the main uh, method of treatment. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this therapy, therapy, uh, chemo ra radio uh, therapy is needed for about 70% of the patients. And uh, what is even worse, depending on the stage and the initial stage of treatment and different periods of uh, the illness, uh, uh, recurrences occur. And the highest the stage, the high is the uh, number of recurrences during the second stage after chemotherapy and radiotherapy. It's about 70%, with fourth um, uh, stage, it's 74%. No, it's uh, quite uh, uh, quite a well-known classification. I'm not uh, going to speak about it. A uh, surgeon should not talk about this classification to uh, gynecologists. Uh, the uh, uh, third and the fourth stage in our country are uh, detected uh, in about uh, uh, 32 percent of cases, and the. Uh, Mortality rate is uh, quite high, about 50 percent. What happens if there are recurrences? Now, it's uh, 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 something to be discussed. If we take radiotherapy, then with the uh, recurrences after radiotherapy, we understand that the tumor is devascularized, and uh, the second stage of uh, chemotherapy uh, is not that effective. So at a certain point of time, uh, uh, we have to think, well, if the there is surgery. One, what should it give us? Um, probably uh, surgery is the um, uh, only option in order to extend the lifespan of these uh, patients. Um, and uh, uh, the, the uh, radicality here is another issue. Many clinics say that uh, they are carrying out these operations, but what is resectable in one clinic can be uh, become quite resectable uh, with uh, uh, R0 res re resection and very good survival rate. Now, talking about the history of this particular problem, we should mention the name of the very first and the most outstanding person um, in this field, a Russian who uh, was the first to carry out uh, the evisceration of small um, pelvic. Uh, oh, it was palliative. It was. Uh, uh, um, uh, a surgical experiment in a way. The surgeon wanted to help the patient to get rid of certain complications. Uh, but nonetheless, it was done. And uh, uh, actually, brushing in his works uh, used to say that uh, uh, evisceration is not that necessary with a cervical. Again, it's poss possible to have exopation um, 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 with. Uh, and he suggested evisceration of uh, pelvic, depending on the localization of the um, recurrences. So it could be anterior and posterior, and uh, the central. Uh, there is uh, the uh, total evisceration of the small pelvis. Moreover, evisceration of uh, pelvis can be uh, pelvis can be divided into supra elevator, infra elevator, and infra elevator extended with uh, vulvectomy. What is most important here? If we expand the volume of evisceration, we must understand quite well uh, that in 1996 there was a very well uh, done paper by Margin uh, published. Uh, if we uh, uh, carry out a zero evisceration 
extension, then the extension will not have an impact on the uh, distance uh, impacts on the remote uh, results of the evisceration. So R0 is our purpose. And uh, there is quite a lot of papers with very good indicators, uh, uh, with uh, very good outcomes. But in this sphere, we cannot suggest any randomized uh, um, uh, 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 trials. Uh, there are individual papers which are dedicated to that uh, with survival rate 55, it's five years, sometimes it's 45 percent. But these are very good indicators, uh, indicators for five-year survival for the uh, patients uh, who are very often considered to be incurable. And the, uh, uh, now, if we take uh, the uh, organ removing eviscerations, then it is the resection of the walls of pelvis. And uh, there was a very important paper by Hockel published uh, where the five year survival was estimated to be 60%. And what is uh, that type of resection? That's removal of all the muscles, all the nodes uh, nerves, uh, of nerves and uh, um, uh, va vascular nodes are also removed and so of course it uh, makes the life quality much worse but it uh, provides very good results for the five year survival Now, let me uh, say again, there is a lot of papers on evisceration. Many centers carry out evisceration. And you can see the trend initially was as follows. There was a high level of mortality, not that many complications, because the patients very often died after the surgery. But now uh, the uh, mortality rate after the operation is quite uh, 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 low, about 3% after 30 years uh, of post-operative and complications. That's about 50% and very good indicators of five-year survival varied between 50% and up. Let's wait for the video. Okay, right. So if uh, yesterday you were um, at the broadcasting, we carried out the visceration of the small pelvis, and uh, we will uh, demonstrate a short video that is the uh, anterior visceration of small uh, pelvis. And uh, actually, it looks very attractive <laughs> um, here than yesterday. And the main goal um, with staging uh, of the tumor prior to the surgery when selecting the method of treatment is to decide side where uh, R0 evisceration is possible. So the main trend of this surgery is to move to the lateral walls uh, and define uh, whether the extended evisceration or uh, extended evisceration or uh, standard one is needed. So uh, we can see here the lateral wall. You can see the nerve here. Uh, we can see that uh, the electric uh, uh, scalpel is used and there is uh, a plasma coagulation involved and this is the ERBA instrument that is being used here. Uh, works very well and is unique in its field. Uh, then um, uh, we work on the left and then the right um, walls. And a very important aspect here, we have to separate the organo complex from the rectum, uh, because there is always a serious problem if the tumor occupies the um, cavity of the small uh, uh, pelvis. Uh, it, is it is very important important not to um, uh, 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 not inflict any damage on the rectum and uh, decide immediately what kind of uh, extended approach we need. Uh, according to many surgeons and uh, gynecologists, visceration is associated with a lot of uh, bleeding. and uh, But this is not quite true because at present, uh, in our center, we have about 50 viscerations per day with the average loss, blood loss, about uh, uh, 400 milliliters. And this means means the no extra manipulations are needed. So we can see we cross the uh, uretra and uh, as an option, the uh, phalae uh, catheter uh, is used. And in order to make it more uh, comfortable after we cross the um, uh, 
uh, uh, vagina, we move uh, over to the wall of the rectum, being very careful uh, here. There are no uh, hidden bleedings here, no hidden hemorrhage. Sometimes the loss of blood is somewhat more significant, particularly if tumors are large. Here it is T4 uh, tumor um, with the uh, shift towards the bladder. And uh, we finally separate it from the rectum. And uh, uh, here is the uh, small pelvic cavity. Once we uh, uh, finish the removal of the tumor, let's talk about the reconstructive plastic surgery. Because we all understand that that's not enough to remove the tumor. Removing the tumor is easy. However, uh, restoring the um, um, structures, the biological structures, and the bladder uh, is an entirely different thing. The first surgeries that we performed, uh, the first eviscerations that we performed, um, uh, Urotrocutaneum uh, cutaneostomy is technically the most, uh, the simplest uh, method. Uh, however, uh, strictures can form, and if we perform the surgery, and the patient, uh, the patient's complaint is very severe uh, and um, experiences profuse bleeding, uh, we will remove the bladder. For a long time. Uh, we didn't have uh, any urine uh, collectors, any normal urine collectors, and we uh, tried to uh, form uh, high-pressure uh, urine reservoirs. This is not terribly acceptable because uh, this results in uh, the further infection. So um, there are many uh, methods that you can use to avoid this with the double valves, triple valves, um, and this is not um, this is not a um, standard. This method is not a standard as of today. Breaker modification of blood reconstruction uh, highly widespread in. Uh, um, bladder surgery. However, this does require excellent patient selection because to ensure retention, urine retention, you need to preserve the uh, bladder neck and sphincters. Ureter alone uh, will not achieve this effect. So when we talk about um, cervical cancer, the uh, bladder triangle, uh, uh, the bladder, neck, uh, uterus triangle is um, a huge problem. We need to fight for uh, PFS for as, uh, as long as possible. Um, Breaker modification uh, of pelvic evisceration. Breaker is one of the others who contributed a lot to the uh, investigation of uh, uh, bladder reconstruction technologies. Uh, let us form the, uh, we're forming the iliac conduit uh, with 15 centimeters of the iliac uh, gut, intestine. What you, what you can see here is the uh, double right ureter. There are two um, methods here, so you can um, you can attach the uh, ureter to the side of the um, intestine or go for um, an osteomosis, uh, attaching the ureter, uh, a single row anostomosis. Um, the top lip of an ostromosis. And you introduce um, a damp stoma. 
place the urine collector and the patients do feel quite comfortable. So if uh, some of you are present during the discussion, I will show uh, the film uh, about a patient who uh, will talk about her quality of life. Another aspect of uh, bladder, uh, uh, another uh, aspect of surgery is the uterine fundus reconstruction. If we talk about sexual activity of our patients, especially in the uh, rural areas, and we compare them with European women, uh, the, um, there may be some differences in uh, here. Uh, the, um, it is possible uh, to uh, perform the skin reconstruction of the vulva. The world, the global data show that patients with this uh, surgery account for just 40% of the total European uh, patient population. The patients need to be carefully selected because if um, the patient has received uh, radiological therapy uh, to a large extent, uh, this increases the risk of sequelae. So it's a highly disputable matter. I cannot give you a ready answer whether this needs to be done or not. The case need, uh, this needs to be uh, resolved on a case-to-case -case basis. Finally, let us discuss our data. Statistics are interesting, but uh, we need to understand that we do something apart from statistics, don't we? We have accumulated experience of uh, pelvic uh, evisceration uh, of uh, over 10 years. Um, we have, uh, we operate on uh, different groups of patients. Uh, we perform total and posterior eviscerations. Some of them palliative. At the beginning of our career, we sometimes used to overdo things and we regret it now. The key sequelae, um, sequelae were uh, present in 32% of the patients, including um, septic uh, complications at the opening, at the inception stage. Uh, letality, uh, mortality uh, was 5.3%. Uh, we lost uh, several patients to sepsis. As far as 30-day uh, mortality was concerned, uh, it was lower than 3%. And these are our results. A five-year uh, survivability was about 30%. In the radical surgery, um, it can, uh, it can, uh, survivability is higher. It is lower in the palliative uh, group. If we talk about um, primary tumors, uh, uh, palliative patients uh, have a very poor two year survivability. We lost practically all of them within the first two years. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes we don't have a clear uh, understanding of the uh, whether the margin is positive or negative. Although five years survivability is something that makes me happy, uh, it's forty percent for the radical operations. Pelvic evisceration is uh, can be it can be performed, uh, but you need to select patients very, uh, very carefully, and you need to remember that what we are doing here is a radical operation. Unfortunately, there are no meta analysis for cervical cancer, but uh, as far as rectum cancer is concerned, there was an, a British meta analysis uh, comparing about two thousand um, trials operations, sorry, uh, and evisceration, R2 evisceration uh, resulted in zero three-year survivability. 
Uh, so our zero eviscerations were conducted only in, seven, in 52, uh, 57 percent of the cases. Brunswick, uh, the founder of the technique, the guru, um, described his operations, his own operations, as brutal and cruel, uh, but ones that can ultimately uh, be a lifesaver for their patients. Unfortunately, uh, the, uh, this problem is uh, very multidimensional. It's very complex. And uh, the patients need to be followed up fair, uh, fairly carefully uh, and need to be carefully managed until the very end. Uh, uh, not all clinics like that, but we do. So send our patients to our clinic and we will try to help them as best we can. Dear colleagues, and uh, we have uh, um, some time for the questions. Ludmila? Microphone, please. Um, it's a fantastic presentation. I remember your, the first paper that you um, presented when I asked you a question about cost efficiency at one of the congresses here in St. Petersburg during the White Night season uh, at the White Night forums. Um, I um, am happy that uh, your managers support you. Um, the question I would like to ask is uh, this. Uh, some publications say that uh, pelvic evisceration uh, can be accompanied by photodynamic therapy. Do you think this is feasible? Do you think this is recommendable? Because uh, this therapy uh, results in uh, toxic effect, uh, something that we cannot afford uh, in patients as uh, severe as that. From your standpoint of a practicing surgeon, it's a highly disputable question because photodynamic therapy um, in all treatment groups uh, is uh, advertised quite aggressively. It's difficult for me to answer this question because this is not something we do for dynamic therapy. And no randomized controlled, uh, no randomized studies have been conducted uh, confirming that photodynamic therapy is really effective. If there were publications uh, that were based on evidence, we would probably yes this technology and try to adopt it in our practice. But I don't have an opinion on this issue. It's just something that we don't do. Irina, uh, microphone. So you have achieved some good results uh, that make you happy, that make us happy. Can your results be explained by R0? How do you define R0 uh, if you evacuate, if you remove so much tissue? Because it's pelvis we're talking about, not the not breast. Um, is it possible that, and second, is it possible that uh, you are exaggerating the numbers and uh, uh, the, the indications and that uh, this um, surgical intervention was avoidable. How do we evaluate, how do we assess a zero resection? Uh, in my lecture for coloproctologists, um, I discussed uh, the necessity of having good quality MOT uh, so we need to have really good radiologists to perform the service uh, and uh, is it the R0 resection that uh, we're performing or not sometimes uh, the alternative is uh, urgent biopsy of uh, pelvis walls lateral pelvis walls. Uh, but urgent investigations are not a terribly informative method. So the only correct solution is a planned histological investigation of all pelvis systems, um, such as ureters, uh, the bladder, etc., etc. I know that the service is really well developed in the Oncology Institute, but um, it's very important to have multifocal biopsy. 
for the operation. As far as the exaggeration of indications is concerned, let me be frank. In my situation, I am trying to um, refuse from evisceration. I don't take on my patients. There is an, uh, um, a board, there is a panel uh, with uh, gynecologists on board, with oncol surgeons on board. And uh, some of them, uh, sometimes uh, we take on patients that other uh, doctors reject. Uh, however, this is something that, uh, yeah, this is very, microphone, this is very similar to uh, the fact when radiologists publish their data on uh, um, third stage cancer and they say that they have 60% survivability or something. The first question we ask them uh, was whether, it w uh, whether the staging was correctly performed. Yes, uh, honestly, uh, we tried to uh, work on those numbers an hour before this presentation because uh, to uh, because Kaplan Meyer is um, a very interesting method because uh, sometimes uh, sometimes you can uh, you, you can use uh, people lost to follow up in different ways sometimes you count them as uh, living and sometimes as dead um, I don't believe that lateral uh, lateral wool resection uh, results in 60% survivability. But this is not my data. It's the data published by other authors. I feel that uh, these numbers are like through the roof, uh, but I have no reason to not trust them. Uh, Professor Krasinikov, your question. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Can I have just one small comment? Dr. Shosko in Novosibirsk uh, Oncology Dispensary, uh, we invited him to perform operations. He and um, what you what you are doing is entirely admirable. Thank you very much for it. But I've got a question. If we take Rusko and uh, Rusko uh, recommendations, four stage is uh, generally chemo and radiology therapy. However, in a growth in the uh, rectum, maybe Lord Miller will say that, um, will disagree with me, but uh, our radiologists will uh, find that, okay, uh, fistulae can be frequent in uh, this disease. And that uh, uh, and um, of course, Fourth stage uh, is eligible for an uh, evisceration. But what if the patient is for B, the patient is young, a single metastasis in the lung, and you perform evisceration? Are you going to take on this patient for surgery? Is she eligible for the surgery? Um, hoping that uh, surgical surgeons may remove the metastases? Or do you think uh, metastases will be a counterindication in this case? Uh. Yeah, well, first of all, allow me to uh, provide you with an analogy. First of all, we say let's not mix up uh, the uh, ovaries cancer and the cervical cancer and uh, stomach cancer. Twenty years ago, when uh, we um, uh, operated on uh, stomach surgery and when there were no standards, uh, practically there were no uh, counter -indica indications to, uh, but um, uh, we know that the, there is a counterindication for gastroectomy. Uh, um, if we take cervical cancer, we should understand perfectly if it's a young woman with multi organ fistulas, with urosepsis, with the um, uh, uh, distant uh, metastasis, then evisceration is needed for her to live for the next over the next year, no longer than that. But if it is uh, a symptomless uh, cervical uh, cancer, then why have evisceration and uh, worsen the quality of? her life. So we should understand this and let's not uh, promise them anything. Let's not say that after evisceration they all get better, they all uh, recover. No, we should understand quite clearly what we provide for the person. The person, that particular patient does not die as a result of the disintegrating tumor over this current here. Now again, the microphone is not used. 
Uh, no, uh, as for the recurrences, no, mm, as, uh, the, to be after uh, radiation therapy, and there is a recurrency, there's progressing uh, of 2B and primary, primary, it's 4, 4A, radiation, yes, well, what we're going to say, but we cannot um, uh, say that to, uh, let's, let's change all the standards and uh, operate on everyone. No, we can't say that, even if we are very good surgeons.